Hey guys, BowHD here, and I want to show you guys everything that is on my Android smartphone. A lot of you guys are asking, and quite frankly, I've seen a lot of other tech YouTubers go over their smartphones, so I figured I'd show you what my Android phone looks like in the early half of 2014. So let's take a look. So as you can see, my daily driver is the LG G2 for Verizon, as you can see from that lovely Verizon branding on top. I love the slim bezels and large 5.2 inch HD display, which is why it is my go-to phone right now. But there are some good looking phones that are about to be released in the coming months, so we'll see how long I'll be using this phone. But as we power it on by using LG's knock-on feature, we'll see it is running Android 4.2.2. Unfortunately, it's not Android 4.4.2, but uh, as you can see, I do have the lock screen widgets that show me all of my upcoming events right from my Google Calendar. The dash clock widget is actually one of my favorite widgets on the Play Store because it's super clean and simple and functions well as I can program certain notifications under the clock, such as weather and email notifications. And say if I want a detailed forecast, I can just tap on the weather notification in the widget itself, and it'll open up the detailed forecast. So I also use this widget as a weather replacement app, so I don't actually have to have two apps taking up precious space on my home screen. Now underneath that, I have the Google search bar that I use all the time for asking questions or looking up information. It's super convenient and stylish, and I definitely think it deserves its own space on my home screen. Underneath that, you'll find all my social networks that I try and update regularly, such as YouTube, Google+, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I like to put them all there front and center so I can easily access them and better communicate with you guys. So in case you guys aren't following me on any of these networks, I'll be sure to put links for you to do so in the description bar along with everything else I talk about in this video, which will be right down below. Now if we swipe over to the left home screen, we'll find the Today Agenda widget that displays all of my upcoming events and calendar info which basically just keeps me in check and tells me everything I need to do for the week. But the widget itself is super minimalistic and you can customize just about anything you'd like, such as the background opacity and theme, and you can even add events right from the widget itself, which is super convenient. Now underneath that widget, I have several miscellaneous apps that I use frequently, such as Reddit, which I use more than I should, since it is a huge time waster, but it is also a great source for information, which is why it's on my home screen. I also watch a ton of movies, which is why I use Flickster, is my go-to movie app, and I think it has the best interface compared to some other movie apps that I've tried. Next to that, I have my email shortcut, which I don't use very much since I mostly use Gmail, which I have a shortcut for on the Dash Clock widget, but occasionally I get emails there that aren't from my Gmail, which is why I have this universal email shortcut here. Now next to that is Google Maps, which I definitely use a lot. I think it's the best Maps application out there. I made a video a while back discussing the new Google Maps layout changes, which I'm not really a fan of, but I think it's come a long way, and no matter how much they mess it up, it's still, once again, the best navigation app on the market. And then last on this page is the Google Play Store, where I go every once in a while, but I have automatic updating set up, so I really don't go to the Play Store that much, unless there's a must-have app that I need to get. So that's everything on this page. If I swipe over to the right a couple times, we'll find another one of my favorite widgets, which is the Month Today Agenda widget, which is hands down my favorite calendar widget on the market, because not only does it look good, but you can actually display the entire month on your phone and jump between days. You can add events right from the widget itself, and you can actually customize just about everything, such as the opacity and theme. I'd say if you're looking for a great all-around calendar app, you should definitely check this one out. It'll be in the Play Store. It's only like a dollar or two, but I'll be sure to put a link for the widget down below, right below that like button, so you can check it out for yourself. Now, another widget that I use all the time is the flashlight widget, which is actually built into the phone. It's not really a separate application that I downloaded, but if you don't have one, you can easily find one on the Google Play Store. But I use this widget all the time when I need light, and since I can tap to activate it on my home screen, it just makes things super, super convenient. Now, the next items are categorized into folders for my media, my notes, my games, and then my camera applications. In my media folder, I have Xbox Music, Pandora, Netflix, and then Xbox One Smart Glass, which I use every once in a while to control my Xbox One for my phone. The other applications I use from time to time are Netflix and Pandora, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then Xbox Music I actually only have because I keep forgetting to cancel the subscription, but it actually does a pretty good job at creating some good sounding radio stations. But you know, I think I'll be making a switch back to Google Play Music All Access pretty soon when this month is over. If we move over to my notes folder, we'll find that I have Google Drive, Google Keep, and then Package Buddy. I use Google Drive every day for school assignments and YouTube scripts, and then I use Google Keep for everything else in between, such as reminders and lists of what I need to do throughout the week. Those two applications really keep me organized and productive, and I'd probably be useless without them. But Package Buddy is also in this category because I order a lot of stuff online, and Package Buddy does an excellent job at tracking all that stuff for me, so I know when I can expect my packages before they arrive. 
Now, gaming is definitely one area that I don't do enough of, for better or worse. I only have two games on my phone, and that's Flappy Bird and Temple Run 2. I was playing Flappy Bird for a while, but it's kind of grown old, just like Temple Run, but every once in a while when I'm somewhere with no internet connection and need to pass the time, I'll jump on one of those games, but for the most part, I don't really game a lot on my phone. But if you guys are big gamers, feel free to recommend a game or two you think I should check out, because I'm always down to check out a new game, so if you guys have one you think I should check out, be sure to let me know down below in a comment. Now the last folder is my camera folder, which just houses the camera app along with the gallery app. Since I have a camera shortcut on my lock screen and I can just hold down the volume down button to activate the camera app on my phone, I found there's really no reason to have the camera app taking up precious space with its own shortcut, so I figured I'd throw the gallery app and camera app together, which works well for me. But as you can see, my phone is really simple. I don't really have a ton of customizations or crazy themes going on, but there are definitely some that I really find useful or good looking. And actually one of the major customizations I have going on with the LG G2 is with the auto hide soft keys that are hidden on the bottom of the screen. You do need to have your phone rooted in order to make this app work, but it basically it allows you to hide the on-screen navigation buttons so that you can use the entire screen to display information. And with the LG G2 and its massive 5.2 inch display, I think this is a must-have application because it takes advantage of the entire screen and just looks amazing. Usually the app shows a red bar on the bottom of the screen so that you know where to swipe up to access the navigation buttons, but I paid a couple bucks to remove that so it's transparent because I think it looks better. But as you can see overall my phone is pretty simple like I said earlier. The only thing I didn't mention is the apps on the very bottom which are pretty plain and simple. They're the phone calling app, the play music app which I use to store all my songs, Google Chrome, which is way better than any stock browser on any phone, period. If you're using a stock browser, you really should stop and get Chrome, it's much better. And then last is the Hangouts app, which recently replaced my messaging app as I can check SMS messages along with my Google Plus Hangout messages. So it's a nice all-in-one service, especially if you use Google Plus a lot. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, be sure to let me know down below in a comment. But with that said, that is everything that is on my Android smartphone so far this year in 2014. If you guys like this video and would like to see more, you could take a look at my last couple of videos, such as my review of the LG G Pad Google Play Edition, or my setup tour, which is part of MKBHD's setup tour project of 2014. But as always, guys, I'm BoHD from How To and More. Thanks for watching.